Hi y'all, welcome back to the channel. Well, we're back here with this huge solar system that I've just shown you on the last video. And today I'm gonna take you inside and show you the rest of it, come on. I've got videos about how I built this solar shed and welcome. Let me take the camera and I'm gonna do a little walk and talk with you. So the first part of the magic of this solar shed, I'm probably talking too loud. The first part of the magic of this solar shed is this false wall that all this equipment is mounted to. So this false wall allowed me to come in behind and run all of the wiring back and forth, free on lines for the air conditioning system. Everything gets to be back here, which keeps everything out front clean and tidy and safe. So let's talk about this. The solar comes in through conduit, from those panels comes in through conduit, and there's a connection box, a junction box behind this disconnect box. <coughs> this disconnect box has breakers for each of six circuits. Each of these inverters has two MPPTs. And so we have six circuits of solar coming in and each one is protected by its own midnight solar surge protection device. The inverters are the day units that I was fortunate enough to get about three and a half, four years ago before they were no longer able to ship them to the US because of an exclusive agreement that they had with Solar. So I have those and I'm not, uh, I'm not updating firmware or hooking them up to the internet because rumor has it that if you try to update the firmware on these, they might get bricked. Then, the way these all get tied together is through these three electrical panels. There's one panel for the gin, there's one panel for the grid, and there's one panel for the load. Inside these inverters, you have a gin input, a grid input and a load input or output. And each of these panels has three breakers, one for each inverter. And then they have, in the case of the gen panel, I have an input for if I'm running a generator and I have an input for if I'm bringing in the AC coupled PV. Half of that system out there is the original system and it feeds into these solar edge inverters and it feeds into the grid. Now, I have the ability, most of the time, these inverters are just gonna feed into the grid under the original agreement I have with the power company. And there's nothing, there's nothing that's changed about that except I'm no longer taking power from the grid. And so the way that happens is I have a bypass panel and you see it's in grid mode. And if it's a cloudy day or it's especially cold or especially hot, if for any reason I need to supplement the DC uh, coupled solar panels, if I need to supplement them with these AC coupled inverters, I can switch this over to the gen panel and it will feed this AC coupled power into this gen panel and into these inverters and double my photovoltaic capacity. I don't try to sell any of the rest of it into the grid. I just stick with these panels that were originally uh, tied into the grid. So nothing, as far as the power company's concerned, nothing really has changed. The grid panel allows me to tie these three inverters and uh, 
they are off because uh, if, if for some reason this system, if I need to work on this system, or if for some reason this system failed, I have the bypass panel here for the grid. So it is always tied to the house, but right now the house is being fed from the load panel. And in a bypass mode, I would switch it over and I would feed the house from the grid. So I'm using the grid as a backup to my solar system. And so if I ever wanted to use these all-in-one inverters to supply to the grid, I can from here, but these breakers stay off. And so right now, when I'm feeding the solar edge AC coupled inverters into the grid, the only thing that's on in this panel is the grid breaker is on so it can be tied to the solar edge AC coupled inverters and also the breaker that connects to the SPD. Each panel has its own surge protection device. And here's the load panel. The load panel is connected to each of the inverters. Those are on. The house is turned on. All the lighting and air conditioning in this building is coming in this panel. And the SPD, the surge protection device, is also on. The each of these inverters has a two watt copper wire that is feeding into this midnight solar battery combiner box. Each is protected by a 250 amp breaker and each battery is protected, it is a one aught welding wire cable and protected by a 175 watt breaker. And inside here are 2,000 amp bus bars that combine all of the batteries and then feed that battery power or draw from those inverters. They feed it, feed it to the inverters or they draw from the inverters. And when it comes to batteries, these are the batteries that you've seen on the channel before. We have the 280 amp hour EVE cells in each of these batteries. And, and each one is protected by a BMS. Each one has a a uh, fuse in the bottom, a T class a T class fuse, and each one has a monitoring screen. So you can see the 3369, 3370, 3369, 3367, 8, all within oh there's six, all within four millivolts and that's at a 92 percent charge currently it's a sunny day they'll all be charged up by about two o'clock this afternoon and we'll be feeding the community with half of the pv panels will be feeding the community with power on their own separate system that has been here for nine years now eight years, somewhere in there. Air conditioner's up here. We've got a drain pan underneath just in case it were to ever leak. Uh, it has its own drain, but this is a drain pan. If it were to ever leak, it drains to the outside so as to not drip water down onto inverters or batteries. Got some shelving in here for tools and spare BMSs and testing equipment and a small dehumidifier so that if it starts to get humid in here we can run the dehumidifier for a couple hours and dry it back out.
it's uh it's worked out very nicely I've I have uh, been enjoying this now for I've been off grid now for four months and it's worked flawlessly I haven't had to go on grid I haven't uh, had to use a generator I have multiple levels of of protection in case of a failure but I've just been running successfully on this without issue now for four a little more than four months now time keeps flying by the next video is going to be uh, more focused on the batteries themselves and we're gonna talk in that one about how you can top balance a battery that has gone out of top balance because these batteries sat for some time. If you look back on how old the channel is and when I built some of these batteries, some of them have been around for two and a half or three years. And when they sit for that long, the cells drift from each other some. And so if you want to top balance, you can take the battery all apart and put them all in parallel, or you can do what I am going to show you in the next video and top balance them while they're assembled as a 48 volt battery. Stay tuned for that one. Thanks for joining. Really appreciate it. Love making these videos for y'all again. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.